Hello, welcome to our semiconductor education program. I'm Vincent Chan. In this lecture video, I'm going to teach you MOS Cascode Current Mirror Part 2 Output Resistance. Let me tell you, this is a very, very important lesson because you are going to, not theoretically important, but application. So you can apply the lesson you learned from this lecture to other places, maybe many times in the future. Mass Casco Current Mirror. In part one, in the end of toward the end of the part one video, I ask you this question: Is this is correct? Intuitively, instinctively, by your instinct, do you think this is correct, or by inspection? You think the first layer? Some people think the first layer. If we only have the basic current mirror without the second one, the upper distance is R2. By cast coding or piggyback a second layer on top of the first layer, it's the serious combination of the two resistance. Let me ask you again, is, really, is this really a serious combination? The serial, word series can only be used in two terminal, and this is three terminal. So this is definitely wrong. It's wrong. Let's take the lesson we learned from the previous one and uh, replace the mass style with what? With one over GM resistance. One over GM resistance. So two. Mass style now can be replaced by two 1 over GM resistance become this way. So now, therefore, the 4 can be reduced into 2. All right? But how are you going to deal with the two resistance? 1 over GM, 1 over GM. You don't have to deal with this. Because <laughs> why? The floating gate. The gate is floating. What's the current flowing through the resistance? 1 over GM? No current. So no current, no drop. You can simply, you can simply, you can simply short, short circuit the two resistance. All right? So now it becomes even simple. Two dial. Uh, sorry, two mass, Q2 and the Q4. Now we are trying to solve the output resistance of this on the right-hand side. What is the output resistance? First, the, your first response could be because VGS is zero, and output resistance Listen carefully about my reasoning, all right? VGS2 is zero. You don't need to consider GM VGS2. You can treat the voltage control current source as an open circuit. The, the only component that you see is the R2, right? Therefore, you can replace the Q2 with a two-terminal device R2. Why? Because VGS2 is zero. Now, we are facing 4 becomes 2, 2 becomes 1. Now we are facing a kind of <laughs> not very hard question, right? Only one mass with a source, external source resistance, which is R2. So what's the upper resistance? If I challenge you, use analysis by inspection and put down the answer within 10 seconds. Can you do that? Let me show you 10 seconds. R4 plus 1 plus mu4 R2. If you watch carefully for the next 
five to ten minutes, you are gonna learn this skill and do this confidently in the future. Think about this: how to deal with. I I I, I urge you to to pause five minutes, without looking at that answer I posted on the left hand side. Just try to figure it out. Try to solve this by yourself. How to solve? You can use the、uh, equivalent circuit, either hybrid hybrid pi model, or the T equivalent T equivalent model. So let's start with the five minute pass. Have you figured this out? Of course, you can solve this by what I just said five minutes ago. Use Equivalent circuit and circuit theory analysis, then you can get the result. But I'm going to teach you another way. That we are going to leverage the lesson we learned from before, and have a big picture connect connecting two different devices, bipolar and the MOS. As a teacher, I'm always try to look at the big picture. I try to always try to give you the best, the integrate what you learn, then you can move along. And not to say, and and someone said, I I can only face the bipolar. I I kind of scared with the mask, or I kind of prefer mask, and I don't really understand bipolar. No, you can treat both. You can move around. You can go this way, go this way. I try to connect both sides. That's what I'm doing. Allow me to assume before you go move forward, you already watch this lecture video. Related to Wheeler current source, the Wheeler current source. When I taught Wheeler current source, you have this. You already learned this, right? So what's the answer? The answer is you can use R pi in parallel with R e. R pi, R pi, resistance between emitter and base, looking into base, the R pi, in parallel with R e. And multiply by one plus mu, and then adds the R O like this, right? And mu is defined as transconductance times output resistance, right? You learned this before. Now you are facing this. Become harder or easier? Let me ask you again: For the MR, for the MOS, it become harder or easier? It should be easier, right? Why? Because the resistance on the left hand side between gate, between base and the emitter, look into base, is R pi, which is R pi. R pi is R pi on the left hand side. The counterpart of R pi for MOS on the right hand side is what? It's the resistance between gate and source looking into gate. Should be what? Should be infinite, right? <laughs> should be, should be infinite. So you just simply take out R pi. It becomes like this. You can just take out R pi. R pi in a MOS is infinite. So what does that mean? What's the lesson? The lesson is this. Take note. Next time you see this kind of configuration, don't do dummy things. All right, don't write R plus R S. No, you just take the source, external source resistance. Take the ex ex external source re resistance and the bounce back to drain. Reflect back to drain times one plus mu. Times one plus mu. And then add the R O. So the answer is, here stands R O plus one plus mu R S. This is very similar to what、well, kind of similar to what you learn in the B J T. If you're looking at the base bipolar emitter. So what's the answer? R pi in series with what? 
1 plus beta emitted resistance, right? R pi plus 1 plus beta emitted resistance. Looking into base. For the MOS, is RO plus 1 plus mu. The mu is defined as the product between GM and RO. All right? Very, very important lesson. So now you have this, and you replace, simply replace the RS with R2. Because the mu is much, much larger than 1. So the first two items, R2 and R4, if it's close, I would say the R2, the answer of R2 and R4 is a good approximation. It's a good approximation. It's not exact. It's not accurate, but it's, a, but it's far off. Because the dominant factor is the third item, the final item. All right? The first two items is negligible. So the answer we put down by instinct, by inspection, can be negligible. The dominant factor is the third item. All right? So here's the output resistance. Listen, analysis by inspection. Analysis by inspection. So try to connect the both sides. The left hand side and the right hand side. Try to connect the both sides. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Why RO plus RS is wrong? That's the question I left you in a previous lecture video. Why RO? Why? Where's where go wrong? Where go wrong? The point, what's the key point? The key point is the source, put down this on your note, is not grounded. When source is not grounded, VGS is not zero. When VGS is not zero, follow the logic. When VGS is not zero, then what? The voltage control current source transistor. So the GM VGS is not zero, has the effect. What's the effect? The effect is multiplication. The voltage control current source has to be considered with a multiplication which imply or s signify a multiplication effect. The factor is 1 plus mu. Mu equals gm times RO. And the upper resistance, I just make the conclusion. The left-hand side is the low performance, basic. The right-hand side is very high, not increase. Increase dramatically, all right? It's a very much, much higher. So it's the high performance. Constant current source, a high performance current mirror. I hope you enjoy and feel rewarded when you learn some key skill. Not only learn some key skill, skill but also understand some very, very important concept when you face the circuit analysis. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Thanks for watching.